What's going on everybody? My name is Chris Butler from projectoption.com and in today's video we're going to talk about VXXB which is the newest volatility product that's just been introduced to the marketplace. In this video I'm going to share with you exactly how VXXB works so you know exactly how it's structured and what you can expect from it in different scenarios and I'm going to share with you numerous examples from the real world so that you can see exactly how this product works. Now the concept of trading volatility has become immensely popular in recent years and there have been many different volatility products that have been introduced to the marketplace to allow traders to speculate on changes in the S&P 500's implied volatility which is measured by the VIX index. Now since the VIX index itself is not directly investable, these volatility products allow traders to take long or short positions in these volatility products with the attempt of making a profit from changes in the VIX index. Now you may already be familiar with VXX because that was previously the most popular volatility product out there. But when VXX was created, the issuing company, which is Barclays, had to select a maturity date for that product, which they put 10 years out in advance. So that just so happened to be January 30th of 2019. And since that date has passed, VXX no longer exists. So they created VXXB, which now takes the place of VXX since VXX is no longer in the picture. So now that we've got the history out of the way, we're gonna talk about exactly how VXXB works on a daily basis, and then I'm going to share with you how VXXB performs in different market environments and with different changes in the VIX index and VIX futures. So right now I'm on the VXXB product summary page, and the first thing that it says is that the iPath Series B S&P 500 VIX short-term futures ETNs are designed to provide exposure to the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index total return, which they have called the index for short. Now in the next paragraph, it says that the index is designed to provide access to equity market volatility through CBOE volatility index or VIX index futures. The index offers exposure to a daily rolling long position in the first and second month VIX futures contracts and reflects market participants views of the future direction of the VIX index at the time of expiration of the VIX futures contracts comprising the index. So there's a lot going on in that sentence and we really need to do more digging because just reading that does not really explain how the product works or what we can expect from it going forward. So a critically important piece to this puzzle is this S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index total return. So to figure out what this actually is, I'm gonna go ahead and search Google for this and I've already pulled up the link a couple times and I actually think this page does a phenomenal job of describing what this index is actually doing. So this is the official page for this index which VXXB is tracking on a daily basis. So here it says the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index utilizes prices of the next two near-term VIX futures contracts to replicate a position that rolls the nearest month VIX futures to the next month on a daily basis in equal fractional amounts. And here is the key. This results in a constant one month rolling long position in first and second month VIX futures contracts. So to really illustrate what they're talking about here, I actually did a blog post on VXXB, which I'll link in the description. And here is the example that I'm going to talk about. So to illustrate what this S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index is doing, consider that we have the first month VIX futures contract with 15 days to settlement and a current price of 15, and the second month VIX future is 45 days to settlement with a price of 16. So in this scenario, the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index would use a 50% weighting in each VIX futures contract to come up with that one month or 30 day VIX futures contract. Now this contract doesn't exist, we're just calculating it from these first and second month VIX futures contracts. So if we take the front month contract with 15 days to settlement, multiply it by its 50% weighting, and add the second month VIX futures contract with 45 days to settlement multiplied by the 50% weighting, we come up with a weighted 30 days to settlement. Now to calculate the price of this 30 day or one month synthetic VIX futures contract, we need to take the prices of each contract, multiply it by the weightings, and add those two figures together. So we have the, the price of the first month contract times the 50% weighting, and then we add the weighting times the second month contract, which is 16. So in this case, we have seven and a half plus eight, which gives us 1550. So since there's a 50% weighting in each, we're basically just taking the average of these two contracts 
to get the price of our 30-day VIX futures contract. Now, none of this really matters except for understanding how VXXB is going to perform based on changes in these two contract prices. So VXXB tracks the daily percentage change of this 30-day synthetic VIX futures contract that is derived from the first and second month VIX futures. So in this hypothetical scenario, if this one month VIX futures contract went from 1550 to 1650 in one trading day, that would be an increase of 6.45%, in which case we would see VXXB also increase by 6.45%. Now, on the other hand, if the one month VIX futures contract that we just calculated went from 1550 to 14, that would be a loss of 9.68%. And on this particular trading day, we would see VXXB decrease by 9.68%. So in this chart that I've created, I've plotted VXXB, which is the very top line against the VIX index and the first and second month VIX futures at the time that I created this chart. Now, when I created this chart, the first month VIX future was the January 2019 VIX future, and the second month VIX future was the February 2019 VIX future. The VIX index itself is represented on this chart by the dashed line, which we can see above these VIX futures. Now, the main point I wanna get across with this visual is that as the near-term VIX futures increase in value, VXXB also increases in value, because it's tracking the daily percentage changes of that one month VIX future that's calculated from the first and second month VIX futures. On the other hand, when the near term VIX futures decrease in value, as I've pointed out on this chart, VXXB also decreases in value since it's tracking the daily percentage changes of those VIX futures. And if those VIX futures decrease, obviously we would expect VXXB to also decrease. Now, at first glance, it might seem like VXXB is in fact tracking the VIX index, but on this shaded region that I just placed on the chart, the VIX index experienced a 41% increase in value, while VXXB only experienced a 16% increase in value, and that's because VXXB does not track the VIX index, it tracks the near-term VIX futures contracts, and more specifically, that one-month VIX futures contract that we calculate from the first and second month VIX futures. Now before going out and trading VXXB, it's very, very important that you understand how these VIX futures are expected to perform in the future. Now the way we can do that is by comparing where the VIX futures are relative to the VIX index. Now more specifically, if the VIX index is below the VIX futures, the VIX futures will lose value over time as they converge towards the VIX index. On the other hand, if the VIX index is above the near-term VIX futures, the VIX futures are going to increase in value over time because as time passes, VIX futures contracts converge towards the VIX index level. As we know, if the VIX index is below the near-term VIX futures and the VIX futures have to lose value over time as they converge towards the VIX index, that means VXXB is supposed to lose value over time as well since VXXB tracks the near-term VIX futures. If the VIX index is above the near-term VIX futures, and we know that the VIX futures have to increase in value to converge towards the VIX index, then that means VXXB is expected to increase in value over time as those near-term VIX futures appreciate towards the VIX index. So let's go over some real examples so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So to demonstrate the concept of VIX futures contract converging towards the VIX index over time, we're gonna first start with an example where the VIX index is below the VIX futures contracts and we see a decrease in the VIX futures contracts and therefore VXXB as time passes. So the example we're gonna look at is in the beginning of 2017. And as we can see here on January 3rd, the VIX index closed at 1285. And if we fast forward a couple days, we can see that the VIX index collapses down to this 11 to 11 and a half area. So, the first thing we're going to look at is from January 3rd up until, let's say, January 11th in 2017. So I've just flipped over to the VIX Central website, which is a great resource whenever you want to look at historical VIX futures prices or look at the current shape or state of the VIX futures curve. But anyways, I've flipped to January 3rd, 2017. And as we can see here, the first month VIX futures contract is the January, or January VIX future with 14 days to expiration. And the second month VIX future is the February contract with 42 days to go. 
So as we can see here, the January contract is at 1378 and the February contract is at 1557 on January 3rd, 2017. Now, as we just discussed, by January 11th, the VIX index will have fallen to 1126. So all I'm going to do is fast forward a couple days forward and we're going to look at how these VIX futures prices change as the VIX index falls and also as time passes. So as I click forward, as you'll notice, the VIX futures prices are decreasing at a very steady rate. And on January 11th, 2017, we just discussed that the VIX index closed at 1126. And now the January VIX future is at 1253 with six days to go. And the February contract is at 1422 with 34 days to go. So if I go back to January 3rd, we can see that these prices have fallen dramatically from these prices because we saw a decrease in the VIX index. And as time passes, VIX futures contracts converge towards the VIX index. And if the VIX index is below these futures, these futures are going to lose value over time as long as the VIX index does not increase. So over that same time period, what happened to VXX? Now, keep in mind that VXXB did not exist at the time but VXX and VXXB are essentially the exact same products. They behave in the exact same ways. So we can look at historical VXX price movements to see what would have happened with VXXB if it were the product at the time. So right here, we're at January 3rd, 2017. And as we can see, VXX closed at 94.80. Now, if we fast forward to January 11th, we can see that VXX fell to 85.76. So over that same time period where we saw the decrease in the VIX index and near-term futures, which is what VXX tracks on a daily basis, we saw VXX decrease from 94.80 all the way to 85.76 in just about a week's time. So this really shows you that the VIX index is below the VIX futures. Over time, those VIX futures are going to converge towards the VIX index. And since VXX and VXXB track those near-term VIX futures contracts, decreases in those futures contracts is going to lead to decreases in VXX and VXXB. And as we can see here, that's pretty much what happens over long periods of time when the VIX index is at low levels and the near-term VIX futures are above that VIX index level. So we just looked at an example where the VIX index and futures were decreasing over time, which led to a decrease in VXX slash VXXB. So now we're going to look at an opposite example, which is where the VIX index and futures realize a significant increase over a short period of time. Now, the example we're going to look at is between December 13th, 2018 and December 24th, 2018. So on December 13th, 2018, the VIX index closed at 2065. And just a couple days later, on December 24th, 2018, the VIX index closed at 3607. So we're going from 2065 to 3607. So let's go ahead and look at what happened to the near term VIX futures during that same time period. So I'm back on VIXcentral.com now, and I'm looking at December 13th, 2018, in which case we know the VIX index was right around 20 and a half. Now, over the next couple weeks here, up until December 24th, we know we're going to see a significant VIX index increase to about the 36 level. So the first thing to note is that the December contract here has five days to settlement and the January contract has 33 days until expiration. So we're actually going to notice a shift between the first and second month futures over this example. So if I go forward in time, we can see that the near-term VIX futures are in fact increasing in price. And at, at the time of the December contract settlement date, the contract had risen to 2468 from a price of about 2070 on December 13th. So if we continue going forward, now the December contract has expired. So now the first month VIX future is the January contract and the back month VIX future is the February contract. And if we continue going forward in time, we can see that these near-term VIX futures contracts are indeed experiencing that increase in value as they converge towards the VIX index and also as the VIX index increases. So now I'm back on the Tastyworks trading platform and I've pulled up the chart of VXXB. And as we can see on December 13th, 2018, VXXB closed at 3901. 
And if we fast forward to December 24th, we can see that VXXB did in fact experience a significant increase. And on December 24th, 2018, VXXB closed at 49.43. So the moral of the story here is that these volatility products, primarily VXXB, are tracking the daily percentage changes of the first and second month VIX futures contracts. And if we have a situation where the VIX index is below the VIX futures, as time passes, those VIX futures contracts are going to converge towards the VIX index, and that's going to result in losses for the long volatility product VXXB. Now, on the other hand, which is the current example, if we have a situation where the VIX index is above the near-term VIX futures contracts, as time passes, those VIX futures contracts are going to converge towards the VIX index, and those VIX futures increases are going to result in VXXB appreciating, sometimes significantly. So, in short, if the VIX index is below the futures, VXXB is going to have downward price pressure, and if the VIX index is above the near-term VIX futures, VXXB will have this sort of tailwind, so to speak, and it will experience price increases if the VIX index does not fall back down to the levels of the VIX futures. That's going to do it for the video on VXXB, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out some more of our options trading videos, feel free to click on the videos featured on this page right now. Once again, I'm Chris from ProjectOption.com, and I will see you in the next video.